Welcome to another installment of Leon Checks Out Old Rack Gear. Today, we are looking at the Digitech 2120 Artist. This has been quite possibly the most requested piece of old rack gear for me to check out. And I have to say a massive thank you to Brian for sending me one of these units. He has single-handedly made this video possible. Not only did he ship me the rack unit, he shipped me the giant foot controller to go with it as well. And it's a pretty awesome system. It's purple, it's a tube preamp, it's a solid state preamp, it is a multi-effects processor with so much depth. There are even presets made by artists like Joe Satriani, Frank Gambale, and Korn in here. It's kind of like a proto Axe FX or Helix. You know, we take these things for granted now that we have these rack units these days that just sound absolutely incredible and they do everything. The 2120, was very much the forerunner to those units. And we'll see why in a second. But first, I'm playing my PRS Custom 24. For the first part of the video, you're gonna hear the 2120 in stereo straight into my interface. And I'm using some power amp emulation and some stereo impulse responses so that we can hear this unit, I guess the way it was meant to be heard, basically through a cabinet and mic'd up in glorious stereo. Of course, we're doing all of that virtually. Then we're gonna hear just the effects only section where I use my Axe effects for all the core amp tones and we can just check out whether this thing is worth grabbing as an effects only processor. Now, let's get something out of the way. It does have a built-in speaker emulation if you wanna try to run this direct, but I tried it and uh, it sucks. Look, it's a it's a 90s guitar effects processor. It doesn't have impulse responses in there. Uh, I'm sure there's people out there who've done recordings and gigs using it that way, but compared to what we can do nowadays, especially with IR technology, uh, it's, it is what it is, you know. Maybe sucks is too strong a term, but I don't think I want to waste too much time playing around with that, trying to dial it in. We're going to hear some factory presets. We're going to get into the preamps and then we'll hear the effects only. Let's go. Let's hear some factory presets. I'll start with factory preset number one called Satch One. A big selling point of the 2120 Artist Edition were all the artist presets. We've got presets by Joe Satriani, Steve Morse, Frank Gambale, Korn, Reeves Gabrels, whole bunch of other stuff. Let's just kind of play through some of those. And I want to show off the morphing function as well using these because that's really fun. But uh, factory preset number one, let's have a listen to some Satch. That's kind of the vibe there. There's a few other Satriani presets in here. Satch 3, which is uh, kind of like a brighter, more aggressive version of that. I should mention as well, I've got the foot controller down here and there's a lot of auto assignments on the volume pedal. So let's check that out. Very, very cool. Let's hear number four. This is an Alex Lifeson preset. Let's try to play some Rush. I would definitely go in and tweak that one. It's a little bit bassy sounding there. I want to hear these Steve Morse presets wherever they are. I think it's in the fourth bank. Oh, the Steve Morse clean. I bet you this is going to have a really sweet uh, kind of volume pedal assign on it. So let's play with some of that.
that's probably the pick of the bunch from all of these. Could you hear the seamless preset switching in there as well when you go from clean to lead? You can actually, I think there's a global control in there where you can kind of control the crossfade time on that. Uh, let me go from lead to clean. <laughs> And all the effect trails uh, carry over. So that's really sweet. Let's hear some of the morphing presets down here. Uh, it's really cool that the foot control, I know you can't see it, but it's kind of telling you what's in each bank. So this is a like country to rock morph. I'll start with the heel down position. <laughs> That's wild, that's going from like a kind of DI guitar to a synth thing. Uh, hot stack to greasy fuzz. I think I'm gonna like this one. I think that hot stack setting sounds amazing. The greasy fuzz uh, kind of reminds me of the old like Roland COSM uh, on the VG8 or stuff like that. You know, where people are like, hey, let's do a Steve Lukather preset and Steve Lukather just equals heaps and heaps of fizzy gain plus delay. And then you actually go and listen to Steve Lukather and you're like, doesn't sound anything like that. But the hot stack's pretty good. <laughs> So that it is cool that you've kind of got, you know, the built-in dual processing thing where you can morph seamlessly between two lines. Uh, what's this one? Super wet clean to thrash because actually, no, that kind of does make sense if you were going from like a clean intro. Uh, let's hear it. I like the delays on there. Again, everything's just kind of a little bit overcooked. Okay, this is gonna be interesting. These are the blues presets. Let's uh, go some late night blues. <laughs> Kind of in the middle, uh, you can't see it again, but I've got the expression pedal right in the middle. That's where there's the most gain. It's not terrible, not terrible at all. <laughs> so there's some morphing thing happening there. Uh, let's hear squeezy clean with delay. That's really fun to play, I like that. Uh, big blue solo. Yeah, doesn't sound bad. I don't know if it's a big blue solo. You might lose your gig if you crack that one on. Uh, sweet and blue solo, let's hear this. <laughs> I'm guessing that's kind of like an Eric Johnson style thing. Oh, there's some cool sounds in here. We've got a country bank. We've got a metal bank. Let's hear some metal. I'm quite interested to see how these preamp sounds actually kind of stack up. And uh, I will do a separate section for the effects because I know a lot of people would be interested in this unit as an effects only processor. Uh, let's just see if there's anything good in any of this. No.
That's fun. I like that. Octavian Stereo Razor. You know, I uh, pulled this unit out earlier and I was going through just making sure it all worked. And there were a couple of sounds where my wife, I heard her go, that just sounds like guitar center. And um, this is the most of those guitar center tones there. Bad attitude. <laughs> That's totally how you play the Attitude song as well. Death Scoop. Yeah, that's just like a cartoon version of metal, isn't it? Uh, let's hear some preamp only tones because this is where I'm kind of interested. We might do some tweaking in this section now uh, so we can kind of transition from the factory presets. Some of them were kind of cool. Some of them were, I guess, what you would expect from a purple rack processor from well, when did this come out? The mid 90s, the late 90s? Uh, let's just hear Tube Dirt. Okay, so much more usable straight away. This should be like preset number one, so that if someone plugs this into a power amp and a cab, I'm losing the ability to speak at the moment, but you know, you plug it all in and you just kind of get something that sounds like an amp, which I like. <laughs> Okay, the cool thing is we've got our like, we don't have to do any menu diving to tweak the preamp, so I probably want less gain. Can I do that? Will this encoder actually turn for me? Kind of, I think that encoder's a bit cooked. Uh, less bass, that would be nice. Maybe, let's try that. I would like less gain on that, but this encoder doesn't want to play ball. Look, I'm turned it to the left and it's going up. Ah, uh, these old things, that's part of the charm. Well, I'm just getting more gain, so I'm guessing maybe I'll use my volume control instead. Yeah, this is, I guess, the kind of difference between uh, like something that's good at being a preamp and something that's great at being a preamp because uh, rolling down the volume control there, you kind of hear it starts to sound like cardboard. Uh, big power chord. That's really cool. I would love to hear that with, uh, let's like add some, let's hit edit. Uh, tube distortion apparently is off. Tube graphic EQ is off. This is the solid state distortion at the moment. Very interesting. Graphic EQ noise gate. Uh, let's throw some effects on there. So we've got a basic through module. I want to change that so that it's maybe a delay or something. Uh, can I do that? <laughs> Let's go back to the preamp. So this is kind of interesting. What you can do is say we're on this like distortion. This is a solid state distortion. Uh, you can use this knob here and kind of go through like built in presets. So you kind of have your modules and then there's presets within the modules. Uh, so we can, let's just hear some of what Digitech thinks should be good. Uh, punchy. Yeah. That sounds like so many amp in a box pedals, it's not even funny, uh, in the 90s. Max Crunch. Thank you, Max Crunch, high gain. That one would be very usable, uh, low fuzz. That's really, really funny. It's um, it's not doing the fuzz thing, is it? It's kind of like a slow gear in a fuzz, though. That's kind of fun. Low fuzz, medium fuzz, the fuzz. <laughs> you know, 
you know what? That's not too bad at all. It's kind of weird seeing a rack unit do fuzz effects. Uh, and then there's a bunch of overdrives. <laughs> Again, that's kind of got the amp in a box thing going on. I don't hate that chunk. Well, that's chunk one. Maybe chunk two will be chunkier. That kind of reminds me of the Marshall JMP1 right there. So let's roll with that one. Let's go to page two. Maybe I can do some... What can I do? I can change the gain. Okay, I obviously need to go to the EQ to do this. So 10 band graphic EQ. Let's have a look. Uh, there's a bunch of presets in here as well, but you've got various bands, so uh, there's kind of too much low end in nearly all of this for my taste. So you've got that 10 band graphic in there. Let's do this. So let's hear some tube distortion. So I'm going to turn this off. I think that's how I do it. Uh, tube graphic EQ, I wouldn't mind that on. And the tube distortion, I... Oh, was that just on? Bypass off on. Okay. So there's a difference between off. Off takes it out of the chain and bypass will pass your dry signal through it. So I better go back to my distortion over here and turn that off. Okay. That chain is now off. What do we got here? Uh, let me just bring up, what do we got here? Mid cut. Maybe I'll turn the tube EQ off for now. Let's just hear some kind of stock sounds. This is warm, clean. Okay, immediately there is a feel difference here. That feels a lot more like a kind of classic rack preamp, the tube distortion dirty number one. How do I tweak the gain? Probably tweak this page. And let's just bring the gain down a little bit. And now let's bring up some of that tube EQ. Let's put that one on and let's just play around with some of the um, kind of built-in presets, I guess. That's interesting. Uh, let's see, let's go mid cut. I'm just going to roll with this. Let's go over to one of the pages. Uh, it's, oh, you can even change the phase. That's kind of cool. So we're cutting, what, a bit of 450? Uh, let's not boost 250. Let's actually pull some 250 out and let's go. What do we got here? Give me some, give me some of this like 1.5 and 800 stuff. This is super interesting. All right, so I think I'm sorry. The penny has dropped for me now after going through a bunch of these factory presets. So uh, you get the kind of distortion character from either the solid state or the tube distortion. And then rather than have a tone stack, they've just given you a graphic EQ in here, which is kind of powerful. Um, the only other thing this kind of reminds me of is the, obviously a lot of people are going to compare this to, I guess, like the uh, Mesa Mark series with the five band EQ. So that's kind of cool, but sort of like the Rocktron Piranha that's got semi parametric mids though. It's a different thing going on, but you know, I can really kind of bump some of this 2.5. <laughs> which is a bit obnoxious, so let's not bump it that much. Let's have a listen if I give it a real mid spike. Yeah, not that much on the 1.5. I'll leave that flat. I'll leave the 800 flat. Let's go and, um, you know, like I said, I don't mind pulling out... Uh, what is going on here? Give me page. Give me these pages. Let's have a listen to what 450 is doing. 250 is doing this. I don't think I need 80 hertz to be boosted that much. Let's leave 250 flat. Let's, am I liking 450? I think I am. Maybe I, if I can give 800 a bit of a push as well and bring down a bit of 1.5. Ooh, that 800's not great, is it? Let's set that flat. Ooh. 
Very, very interesting. I've obviously been playing around with this for a lot because my monitor just turned off. This is probably a good point uh, to maybe segue into playing around with some effects. I should probably just do a separate video once I've had maybe another month with this thing, just kind of dialing in the preamps. But that's the basic workflow with it. So what we're going to do next is kind of discard the preamp stuff and have a listen to just the effects section because this is an interesting unit in that it offers you basically a true preamp, a solid state preamp, and a pretty powerful multi-effects processor all in one unit. So I'll move over to the Axe Effects for all my amp tones where I'm a lot more comfortable, and then we'll just have a listen to the kind of quality of the effects. This is the tone with the 2120 bypass. Then we're just gonna roll through some of my favorite effect types. <laughs> Alrighty, let's begin. The way I'm running this, I'm using each S disk to run one effect each. You can run up to eight effects between those two S disk cores, but I think two effects is gonna be fine for this particular video. So at the moment, I have a through module, so it's not doing anything. If I use encoder number two, the first effect that will pop up is a dual chorus. So we have an effect algorithm and then we've got different effect types over here. You can see the kind of default one is a medium chorus. Let's hear that. That one's really nice. I like that deep depth chorus and I like this medium well. That's on the dual chorus. There is a quad chorus available as well with kind of similar presets in there. We'll get into the kind of deep parameters. Let's just hear the medium well on the quad chorus. <laughs> That's sweet. There's also an eight voice chorus on here. Let's try this one. We'll try the same kind of factory preset in there as well. Is it there? Do we have, we've got medium, shallow, deep. Let's just try deep depth. Let's hear that with an eight voice chorus. <laughs> That's silly. That is really, really, really nice, especially with that clean sound. So an eight voice chorus. Now we've obviously got these kind of effect types in here. We can go in and deep edit stuff. For example, we can set the affected and dry balance in there. We've got a kind of a master speed for this chorus in here, as well as a master depth. Then we can set this wander speed and depth, which is kind of cool. I'm guessing it's like an intermodulation. Then we can set the individual delay times for the different delays on there, as well as the spread. Pretty wild. That eight voice chorus is really, really good. Let's try a different effect type. We've got a stereo dual chorus. We've got a dual flanger, a stereo flanger. I think we should probably hear the stereo flanger maybe with that uh, kind of distorted sound. I bet you this is going to be kind of like a silly jet flanger. <laughs> All right, exactly what I expected. Let's try a different kind of preset in there. This is just kind of changing all the sweep amount, but I like the sound of this, a flu chorus. <laughs> Man, that's like that Paul Gilbert, Mr. Big ADA chorus. Let's just play around with maybe the effect level or bring that down 
a little bit. What can we change in here? We've got the speed, the depth, I might actually just decrease a little bit. Feedback is cool, we can change the waveform. So what have we got? We've got uh, sine, triangle, I'm guessing. See how this encoder is just kind of jumping around everywhere. We've got SP1 and SP2. Let's just let's try the sine wave. <laughs> Good stuff, I like it. Let's uh, go back to page number one. Although this encoder isn't working very well, it all went backwards. Let's try, uh, let's try maybe the stereo phaser. I'm not a huge fan of like a phaser after an amp, but let's hear it. <laughs> Yeah, I would be more interested to hear that before the amp. Uh, we've got a rotary speaker. Let's hear this, maybe with a clean sound. Kind of cool, I didn't expect that much kind of tweakability in a rotary emulation on a rack mount effect like this. Let's keep rolling. We've got a tremolo, let's hear this. <laughs> Panel. Let's hear this in stereo. Auto pan. It does auto pan. It does it pretty well. Uh, delay. Yes, this is my happy place. We've got delay, dual delay, quad delay. Stereo delay, stereo dual delay, stereo quad delay, <laughs> long delay. We've got an analog delay in there, a stereo analog delay, chorus and delay, and I think a flanger and a delay, and that's all the delay. And we've got pre-delay. This is before we get into the reverbs. I really like the stereo quad delay on this. There are some pretty wild effects in there. Again, those little factory kind of preset effect types are pretty handy. Let's hear this with a clean sound first and then some filth. <laughs> That is rad. I like that so much. Let's just go in and maybe decrease the feedback. That's at 40%, a little bit higher for me. You can see there's a base delay time in here, 500 milliseconds, and then I can set all the other delays as a percentage of that at the moment. 25, 50, 75, and 100%, that's cool. And then you can set how much goes to each output. You can see this type is quite clever in that it is 75, 50, 25, and zero on the left channel, and it kind of mirrors it I think on the other channel, uh, where did we go? Yes, there we go. So pretty cool. I really like that little preset in there. I think it sounds great with distorted lead guitar. <laughs> awesome. Bunch of other delays in there. Let's maybe just kind of move along because 
for me, that quad delay is one thing that this does that makes it pretty unique. So uh, if anything else, you might be interested in this unit just for the quad delay. Uh, where are we? Let's try a different effect type. The analog delay isn't bad, to be honest. If you go in here and tweak the, there's like a low pass filter in there. So if you bring that right down, you're gonna get kind of nice dark repeats. You can even decrease the gain on that right there. And there's diffusion in it as well, which I'm gonna crank all the way up. Let's hear this uh, analog delay. <laughs> Not too shabby right there. I wish all the delay modes had that low pass filter in there. That would have made it really, really nice. Uh, let's go back to the main page while we're just kind of walking through all of this, if this encoder will let me get there. Let's keep rolling. So we've got the delays, we've got the chorus and delay kind of combo, and we've got pre-delay. Let's have a listen to some reverbs now. So this is the straight up reverb. There's also a dual reverb, a stereo dual reverb, and just a stereo reverb. Maybe we'll just live on the stereo reverb. I'm not gonna dive into the parameters too much. I might just use these kind of preset types. So this is the hall. <laughs> Nice. What's next? We've got bar and grill. I don't hate that reverb. That's actually surprisingly good. Uh, we've got an oak floored room. Cool. I don't mind that. Vocal reverb. I'm playing guitar. We don't need a vocal reverb. <laughs> Foil plate. I'm keen to hear the plate style reverbs in this. Maybe a little bit of crunch. That's not too bad. Let's maybe hear a few more reverbs. Gold plate. Maybe with a little less mix, that one would be a little bit more usable. Let's bring the mix right down. These are very 80s sounding reverbs, to my ears anyway. <laughs> That one's kind of cool. Let's maybe hear one more reverb type. What else has gone on in here? Symphony Hall, Pluto Verb. There's gated reverb. That's kind of cool. I don't mind that. Then there's a bunch of user types. I am just kind of skimming some of these. I want to get to the detune. So you got stereo gated reverb, you got a spring verb in there, a room echo, dual detune, quad detune, eight voice detune, that's pretty rad. And you can do all of that in stereo as well. There's also like quad pitch and harmonies and things like that, which uh, personally, I never really use that much. There's also a whammy, uh, there's the harmony mode in there. Maybe let's just hear this A major, a third up. <laughs> I bet you so many players plugged into the, this for the first time were like, oh, A major, I need to play an A major chord. And then it did that and they went, oh, this sounds like garbage. Let's hear, uh, let's hear a little bit more with the clean sound. Yeah. 
Yeah, that sounds like harmonizers. Uh, let's go back to where's my stereo detune. That's what I want to hear. I want to put some uh, kind of EVH balance all over this. So uh, let's just hear what it sounds like straight up with some fill. <laughs> Detune is good, I like that. So uh, there's a kind of rough and ready tour of some of the effect types. For my ears, the reverb is pretty decent. Uh, definitely running it on its own standalone kind of full S disc mode to my ears sounds the best anyway, which is why I demoed it there. The quad tap delay, really, really unique. The detunes are really, really good in there. And stuff like the eight voice chorus and the flanger and a few other things, sound awesome. This is, uh, you know, I've heard people call this like a poor man's eventide, and I don't think that should be a diss on it because some of the effect types on their own sound really, really good. And I could certainly recommend this unit as a standalone effects processor to a lot of people if, say, they're running a standalone preamp and power amp and they want to add, you know, a nice hand-picked selection of like chorus some delay, maybe a bit of reverb. I don't think you need all eight effects on at the same time. For example, let's just try, I uh, will leave this detune on over here and let's go over to the second kind of mode there and I'll, uh, I'll pick out a reverb or something like that or maybe a delay. Let's put that stereo quad delay on there and turn it on. So this is both of those together. <laughs> That is the spirit of the 80s right there. Lots and lots of saturated distortion, stereo detune, a glorious quad tap delay. I like it. So this video went on a lot longer than I anticipated. And if you watched the whole thing, thank you for listening to me ramble and kind of fumble my way through this unit. But there's just so much going on under the hood. I would hazard a guess that there wasn't another unit kind of this powerful until the Axe Effect Standard and Ultra came along nearly a decade longer. And, you know, in a lot of ways, they were game-changing units because the digital modeling in them actually sounded really, really good. And the cab emulations, probably more than anything else, using impulse responses with a big step up from, I guess, what everybody expected a cab simulator to be, which was always just a compromise. This unit, though, you can see how much the current generation of modeling products have sort of built on what the 2120 was doing. I would say that if you kind of take the 2120 and you take something like a TC Fireworks or a GeForce, where you've got, you know, the kind of fractal style, or really it's a TC style uh, grid layout with everything, that's a lot easier to use than the kind of preset workflow in here. But the workflow in here, you still see products like the, I guess the Helix, uh, the Kemper kind of uses that preset grid flow in some ways, the all the kind of Moore stuff and new X, the budget modelers as well. They're still kind of using a very similar workflow over 20 years later. So it's almost like you take this, you take the TC style thing and you put some, you know, actual kind of genius behind the modeling going on there to make it all digital and you get the axe effects. So the axe effects doesn't come out of a vacuum. This is as an effects only processor, I think really attractive because Unlike, say, the Digitech DSP-128, which came out a lot earlier than this, um, the effects, you can run a lot more effects, that's one. The effects sound really, really hi-fi and clean. 
and it's a lot easier to program, which I like. So yeah, really, really curious piece of gear. I'm definitely gonna spend some more time with this one, dialing it in. I actually find it really fun a lot of the time with this old rack stuff. It's, um, you know, I play around with it and I pull some sounds and I just kind of go, you know what, this is cool and it would have been cool at the time, but now it's just frustrating. Whereas this is still kind of cool. It's uh, it's an interesting concept, you know, a an actual true preamp with a solid state preamp, you can do the seamless preset switching. There's some pretty awesome effects in there. There's quad and octal detunes and delays and things like that. So uh, yeah, lots of fun to be had. If you can find one of these cheap in good working condition, you have got an absolute beast of a multi-effects processor on your hands. I don't think the preamps alone stack up to stuff like say the ADA stuff or you know the Triaxis or the Studio preamp, the, the kind of real tried and true standards. I think those things still sound really relevant today. The preamps in this are probably not its strongest suit. The effects, very, very relevant. You could get some great tones out of it. As a whole package, I think it's kind of awesome. And it's purple. So I'll play it out on this LA Chorus preset. Thanks so much for watching all of the video. A massive thank you again to Brian for his generosity and his goodwill in sending me this unit. I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. Thanks for watching. Stay excellent. Be good to one another. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.